So here we are at episode nine, and I had to fabricate a new rack. And you'll see I have the old rack and the new rack stock. The new rack stock came from McMaster, and this rack had a couple bent over teeth, but all in all, wasn't in terrible shape. The biggest problem was I couldn't find a pinion gear to match it, and so I bought a new pinion gear and I bought this piece of stock. I think it was about twenty bucks from McMaster, and. So one problem there was is when I drilled the holes in it, my first attempt, they were too close to the edge. And that's because this piece was a half inch and the previous piece was a little closer to three quarters. And there was no piece that would fit. So the first thing I do here is I mark how much excess there was. Come over to the four by six bandsaw. This thing is a tank. Uh, it's pretty rare I'm happy with it, but this day I was. So let it do some cutting. Pull the piece out, flip it over. One thing I wanted to check there is how well the teeth bound up because I was going to use it in welding and you'll see that um, in another video. Or actually you'll see that in this video. So I had both parts cut off by then. Um, and I found a piece of metal to lay it in. So I threw it in the vise, gave it a quick file down, there were some rough edges. One side was pretty smooth, no issues, the other side a lot less friendly, but nothing a hand file couldn't sort out. It was bad, I had to break out the bastard file, that was a more aggressive cut, cleaned it up. If anyone has any latex glove recommendations, I'll take those too, please. And so that part was done, and then what I did next, took it back to the bench, aligned the two pieces, and I, you'll see in a second, I grabbed a punch. Um, it's a self-centering punch, and I tried to find a way to lock the two pieces together. One thing I'll say is this was my first try and you'll see there were some pieces I intended to use, but that changed up. So I marked the rough locations of where I would need to put in the spacer plates. And my plan was to weld little spacer plates that you can see next to the wrench onto the rack. So I was working out where they need to go, color the pieces in. That was great. Then there were a couple high spots from where I drilled last time that it almost stuck out of the material. And so I needed to remove some of those. See there, you can see that's the piece that was going to fit on. Because of this detour, I actually went to Home Depot, bought a piece of half inch steel and welded it to the rack. And then off cut, what I did is I used that in the vise to keep it from bowing. So well, this was pretty much like an automotive body repair with lots of little tacks, trying to keep the heat as minimal as possible. You'll see I'm on the floor around, um, just trying to keep the heat from really affecting the part. I would say there's probably a spot weld every inch and a half, two inches. I don't have a good bench, otherwise I would probably have done this on a bench rather than my garage floor. And you'll see, put them on. I do have safety glasses on if anyone's wondering. Grind it flat because there's really no room for that. And then continue to weld and grind as I can. I think there was a lot of concern about if the rack would uh, bow, but it was pretty good. It was just having to keep it uh, moving and not apply too much heat. From there I had the piece and then I placed the two uh, pieces of rack together and punched a center mark and then used the drill press to drill it out. Uh, and then you'll see me occasionally use the Ryobi drill to deburr. From there what I did is I would um, move on to the next piece, deburr, 
put the piece together, put a bolt through so that it all lined up. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more. Like and subscribe if you wish. Thank you.